Hey, good night. Hey, everyone, John. Tonight, God is good, and God is good all the time. My name is Herman Jazz Spirit Divine. Here you get your word on tonight. And it might it might be towards a lot of people might be dealing with this. I try to do uh, situations um, sometimes what I'm dealing with or what everyone else might be dealing with in life. You know, so this title going to be Life is Not Fair. You know, and it's going to come through um, Psalms 37, 1 through 11. You know, commentary uh, stories. I have a good, good Bible. It's a good Bible. We have all kinds of stories in here. You know, so uh, there is someone one to two say, do not fret because of those who do evil. You know, I'll be infants of those who do you wrong. You know, for for like soon winter, like green plants, they will soon die away. You know, pretty much this practice gonna be about. You know, you're on your journey. You're in your spiritual walk. You know, so you're going to have a lot of people going to do you wrong. You know, life is not going to be fair because you're going to have all kind of stuff going to come at you. You know, but what you can do, do. You cannot get on the same level. You know, with this practice, this is David wrote his songs, you know, that you still you have to show kindness. We still have to forgive. You know, we, we still have to do this type of thing because we have to take the high rate. You know, we have to take the high rate. And we have to put our pride on the side and still forgive and still be nice to people that do you wrong. So pretty much this what David was writing about stuff that he he had to deal with, you know. You know, he still had to be nice to Saul. And Saul kept on having him running and, and fleeing all, all over caves from cave. You know, but every time he saw Saul, he still had he still was kind uh, to Saul. He still was sparing Saul his life. You know, so uh, this pack is about your your trials that you would be treated unfairly, you know, and people may do you wrong. These are the type of things you're going to be dealing with on your journey when you walk in that walk with God, you know. But if you in the same word, word um, in the same lineman with someone that's doing you wrong, you know, you is not, and, and everybody loves you, like you. You know, a lot of times you're not lining up with God. You know, because you're lining up with God, you're going to have so many uh, people hate you. you look look what Jesus went through. Look, look what the disciples went through. Just because they were walking and walk with Jesus. You know, people just didn't, didn't like them. You know, so they were trying to, they was trying to say, whatever you're going to, you know, we still have to forgive. We still have to be kind to anyone that constantly still do us wrong. You know, we got to take the high rank, you know, because we're the image of God, and that's what the same thing what God would do. You know, but sometimes, you know, so, um, sometimes, sometimes our faith will be tested. You know, if you're a prophet of God, what can I walk with God? You know, a lot of the time, all kind of stuff going I just watch the, the movies. See, I, I watch, I do all my research. Sometimes I watch the movies and stuff like that to get a better insight, you, you know. And um, Jeremiah, you know, he was a person that God, God had, God was getting into you as a child. You know, he was a boy. They know nothing about God. They know nothing what was going on, but God was trying to contact him. God was, God was talking to him, just trying to train him as a child, you know. And he and, and um uh, and so uh but he got to be kind of grown. You know, God gave him assignment to do. You know, had told him to go tell these people what they doing. You know, they they they're doing wickedness in, in um in Jerusalem. You know, and, and when you walk that walk, that just like with Elijah. Elijah was doing everything God was telling him to do. But for some reason, all God prophets get beat down. Get beat down for speaking what God want us to speak, you know. And so a lot of the time, God allow us to go through different situations that's unfairly to us, but to test our faith, to see how we gonna handle the situation. If we go stoop to that level, and those stones were stones, you know. So God take the bad and He turn it into good, you know. He turn He'll take a bad situation and turn it into good, you know. It's up to us to forgive. You know, in our pain and suffering, all that come at us, you know, through it all, we have to forgive. You know, it took me a long time, you know, to get to this point where I'm at now. You know, I've grown so much in my stuff. You know, may not be 100%, but 
you know, I'm in a healing process at the same time, and I'm growing in the same time because a lot of time you can grow in your pain and suffering. You know, I'm gonna discover purpose after purpose through the pain and suffering. You know, so you learn a whole lot in your pain and suffering, you know, because life is not fair. But you got to live in it and you got to try to cope with it the best way you can, the honest way you can, you know. Uh, but God is the one who do the justice. You know, when things don't go out of the way and you know you're innocent and it still turn left and right, you know, sometimes we have to just let it go and give it over to God, you know, because if the real judge might treat you unfairly. But God, he knows the truth and what's not true. He knows what you're going to. He the only one can be a, do the justice for you, and nobody else can. You know, so this story is going to come from th- uh, Psalms 37, 1 to 11. Being a victim of an injustice can test the very root of our faith. It sure can. You know, we, we saw that uh, Joe was all tested. You know, he was going through so much pain, bent over. You know, a lot of time I be bent over. You know, I'm going through so much. You know, but sometimes, you know, it's a trial that you have to take. That your test will be uh be tested. Your faith will be tested. You know, so pain and suffering, a long trial, sometimes may become so bitterness. You know, but we have to not allow us to become bitterness and anger to cause of our lives, upon our lives, you know, cloud our our judgment of how how what we what we supposed to be doing in our journey, you know. I'm gonna be a witness. I'm a witness. Starting out with this sin, I never been through nothing like this before. I had become so bitter, had so much anger, you know. I could not forgive and move on, you know. But now, you know what you have to do if it do occur. You have to get all that out of your heart. I had to get all that out of out of my heart, you know, because you got all that in your heart, you cannot forgive and you won't be able to move forward, you know. So I had to get all that out of my heart, all for me to see, have a clear mind of what direction I'm going, you know. Because just like they said here, just like David said, it will cloud out your your mind of what you really have to do for God, you know. So uh, I was that person, much you know, much came came to me um what was not so much that came to me that was not fair you know trying to get justice sometime it may not work in our favor you know but life is not fair not fair at all special for us prophets special for us uh, uh, um chosen you know life may not be fair for us but we have to cope the best way we can and we can't throw stones with stones you know so i had to pray you know to not allow um, me to have bitterness. Instead, I chose to hang on to the promise of God. You know, so we have a choice. You know, you have a choice. You could either stay bitter and stay where you at, or you either can choose the promise of God, the only one that can help us in our trials, to help us in justice, to help us in anything. You know, um, also everyone at one time or another, you know, may have experienced a situation, you know, where they find themselves saying, that is not fair. You know, that is not fair. You know, so David wrote this song. And when he was faced such a situation, when he saw his enemy prosper, and that's another thing, you know, you could be so much deep in your trial, struggling, and um, struggling and trying to make, um, day by day and you in so much pain and suffering you know and just like david said he had to sit and face and watch his enemy prosper you know because sometimes you know you could be going through so much but you the one walking with god you know but you had to sometimes had to sit and watch your enemy prosper and that's what david said david said he had to watch his enemy prosper while he suffered you know um david however turned his focus to god you know, he stopped worrying about the enemy um, prospering, and he saw focus his himself to God. He focused everything towards God. He found hope, and he know, and his knowing that God would set things right. You know, we have to realize we cannot focus on people prospering around us. You know, because our time will come. We have to just focus on God and focus on our journey. 
you know, and that's what that's what David said. He had to focus. He had to focus to God. You know, he had to hope. You know, knowing that God would make things right. You know, and what was the path that David took to finding peace in the midst of his injustice? You know, he had to find some kind of peace. You know, that's how all of us is. You know, in that dark valley, you know, we have to find peace some kind of way. You know, a lot of time I could be crying and going through so much. You know, but in the mix of I know how to find some kind of peace. You know, peace to still still make it through the day. You know, and still be calm and not take anger out on nobody else. You know, I, I, I used to be that person. You know, I'd have changed a whole lot. You know, I could still, no matter what happened, I could still, you know, move forward in a decent manner. You know, um, so I can't feel what David's saying. You know, because I was in the same situation. I had to remove bitterness and focus on God and find some kind of peace in my stone. You know, I grabbed that Bible. I started reading songs. You know, you got to know songs by heart. You know, where were you at? You know, just start reading songs by, by heart. You know, I, I grabbed the Bible and I just start reading. You know, Psalms 91. You know, um, Psalms 37. You know, so we have to find some kind of some kind of peace in our stomach. And that's how I do. I could I could be screaming, I could cry, but then once I get behind this desk and open this Bible up and just start reading the scriptures, then I've been forgot what I, all I was dealing with. And I'm I'll be putting my material together, reading this story, trying to put it together, you know, and I, I, I had to start finding peace. You know, you have to find some kind of peace in your stone. You know, because if you don't, it just going to build up to business. You know, I was that person before, and I'm telling you, that's nothing nice to be having all that anger in you. And, you know, you can't walk that walk with God, you know, with all that business, you know. Now, you know, God see all my heart, my soul, all that is clear now, you know, because I done got all that out. I don't have all that sitting in me, and see, that's what David said. You know, she can't have all, all that in you and focus on God at the same time. You know, so find some kind of peace in your stone, you know, or, you know, for you to move forward. Now, we have to know that dealing with justice may not be fair, you know, but we have, we have a mighty, now, we have to know justice may not be fair. Nothing may not go in our favor, you know, but we have to realize we got a mighty God, a mighty God that our judge, he our lawyer, he our doctor, he could be anything that you want him to be. You know, no matter what that jaw said, you got to worry about what God can say. Well, because God can touch that jaw's heart and turn your whole situation around. And you walk out of there free. You walk out of there with the, uh, everything on your favor. You know, but that's how he will turn things around. He will turn a bad situation around into good. No matter what that jaw said. When you start praying to God, pulling your guts out to God, God can touch that jaw's heart and turn everything around. And you'll be, you'll be one of man. You know, first he said, just here, you know, you go to recess and come back, everything will change, you know. So that's how we got to look at it. That God, our doctor, God, our lawyer, he our judge, he could be anything he wants to be. That's just like the doctor. doctor said, you got you got six months to live. God said, you got, you, you, you got 200 years to live. You see what I'm saying? It's what God said because God created us. When, when God says our time, no matter what the doctor said, it's our time. When he says not our time, no matter what the doctor said, it's not our time. You know, so God is our lawyer. God is our doctor. He our judge. He whatever you want him to be. You know, so, but we have a mighty God. Mighty God that we could turn to. You know, and he could be anything he, that we want him to be. You know, so lean to God for help. When you're in those situations, lean to God for help. You know, watch how he can turn things around. Because, see, God can work in somebody's heart. You know, he can turn that whole situation around. You know, so because life, because life in the devil don't play, don't play fair at all. They'll make your life so miserable if we let it. You know, but God is the only one perceived justice on our behalf. You know, because God is dealing with the right. You know, God, God, gets, he can see everything that's going on behind our back. That's why all through the Israelite, he always said, I'm going to go ahead of y'all, you know, to see what's in, what's in y'all path, you know, and that's what God do. God will see what's in our path, you know, before, before he let us step into a situation, you know. So let's look at Joseph, you know, a situation 
that life wasn't fair to him. You know, when his own brothers threw him in a pit, you know, before Jacob died, you know, uh, before Jacob died, Jacob told his brothers to give Joseph this letter of instruction, you know. So uh, we're going to look at uh, Genesis 50, 15 through 21. Okay, this is the story with um, Joseph. It's still related to the practice that I'm doing. It, it's this practice is about when when trials treat you wrong, people treat you wrong, enemy treat you wrong, whatever the situation is, you know, we have to be the bigger person and still forgive and still turn the other cheek, put our pride on the side and forgive whatever the situation was. Now, you know his brothers threw him in the pit, you know, and you know later on the brother had to meet up with him. Now, if, if Joseph was a person that had bitterness in him and holding a grudge, he would he would have got he would he would have pretend like even though they came, they didn't even know who he was, you know. But if he was holding a grudge, he could have treated them like slaves, you know. He could have tried to di do them wrong like they like they did him, but he didn't. And see, God, if, if we want God to save us and help us, we cannot throw stones with stones because God will not get involved. You know, so Joseph, this story of Joseph, when um when Joseph brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, "What if Joseph hold a grudge against us and pay us back for all the wrongdoing we did to him?" And see, they um they are they acknowledge all the wrongdoing they did to Joseph. Now, see, the daddy is dead, you know. So now they figure that Joseph. That Joseph wants to, if Joseph gonna hold a grudge and, and get back at them, see they feeling guilty now, you know. So um, so they sent a word to Joseph saying, um, your father left these instructions before he died. Remember the letter Joseph gave to the brothers to give to Joseph, you know. So Joseph gonna read the letter. This is what you ought to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sin and the wrongdoing they committed in treating you so badly. You know, now please forgive the sin of the servant of God of your father. You know, so when when their um message came to him, Joseph read. So when they read that letter to Joseph, Joseph read. You know, he had no choice but to forgive his brothers, even though he was gonna forgive them because if he really want to get at them when they didn't even know who he was, he could have treated them like a slave. You know, so that was this practice about that people could do you so wrong. But you still got to be the bigger person and still have to forgive. You know, now that the daddy told him, you know, even though your brother sinned, even though your brother put you in a pit, you know, even though your brother did all these things, I still need you to forgive your brothers. I still need you to forgive your brothers. You know, it's a whole lot that take up on us, you know, that we still have to forgive people that did us so much wrong. You know, and so his brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. You know, see, they feel guilty. You know, saying so they had to throw themselves down to Joseph. You know, because now the daddy gone. Daddy ain't here to take off of him now. You know, so they really is scared and they're afraid because they don't know what Joseph is going to do to them now. You know, so we are your slaves, they say. You know, so they want to be Joseph's slave. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. I am I in a place of God, you know. So this is this this is God play. You know, he said, I'm in the place of God. You know, you intended harm to me. Listen to this. They intended harm for him. You know, people attended harm to us, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. So you gotta catch this. All this Israelite started with Jacob's family. You know, Joseph was the one that, that, that getting all this, this praying, all, all, you know, in motion. You know, even though he had to go in a pit to get God um, planned to in motion. And that's how, that's how I lied. Look, look at all I had to, want to go through to get, get, get in a position what God wants you at. And sometimes you got to go through all that pain and suffering to get what God wants you at in his plan. You know, this is the plan is being started. It being in motion, and it started with Joseph, you know. So Joseph told his brothers, don't be afraid, because am I in the place of God? 
you intended harm for me, but God intended it good to accomplish what is being done now, you know, and saving of many lives. You know, so Joseph was where God wanted him to be. You know, even though he had to be placed in a pit to get what God wanted him to be at. You know, sometimes you got to be placed in a pit. Sometimes you got to be chained down, you know, to get what God wants you to be at. You know, so God, so Joseph telling them, this is where God had wanted me to be at. You, you know, so he telling them, don't be afraid, you know, because sometimes God will use people to do you wrong to get you where you need to be at. You know, that's what happened with uh, with Jesus, you know. God uh, God had that in plan that Judah was going to betray uh, Jesus, that Peter was going to deny him. You know, that was to get the plan, get Jesus where Jesus needed to be at, to be planning at, you, you know. And so that's how Joseph was. Joseph had to be placed in that pit. You know, that's why Joseph can't get married with the brothers. That's why he told him, don't be afraid, you know, because this is what God had wanted me to be at. You know, even though y'all placed me in the pit, it was, you know, it was placed in your heart to do that, to get God playing started, you know. So, um, so then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you. Now, see, all this stuff they did to Jones, Jones said, I'm going to provide for you, you know, and your children. So he going to take care of them. He's going to take care of their children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. You, you know, and see, to all that, the, what the brothers did, you know, just like the devil can put a seed in people's heart to make them do, God can put a seed in somebody's heart, but only to turn it around for the good. You know, because, you know, God is all about doing good. You know, so he turned, God turned that bad situation uh, around for a good situation to get his plan started. This, this was, this was when his plan had started. You know, Joseph was the first one, you know, had put everything in motion. You know, and sometimes you're going to go through your trial. You're going to be sitting in a pit. You know, I went through all kinds of stuff. Bouncing from this place to bounce to that, that place. And not, next thing you know, I'm bouncing to the same place I ran from but because that's what God wanted me at. You know, sometimes you got to go through all the changes to get what God wants you to sit at. You know, so that's how Joseph was. That's why Joseph told him, don't be afraid. You know, I'm right what God want me to be at. You know, you attending home for me, but God attending for good to accomplish his plan. You know, so that's that's the story that lined up with this package I was talking what I'm talking about. So we see that Joseph's life, it wasn't fair, but it was the will of God plan. You know, sometimes sometimes we go through stuff, it might not seem fair. You know, for all the while, you know, that just let me all the stuff I go through, you know, it's still it's like you write what God wants you to be at. You know, and so Joseph went through all that procedure. You know, Joseph was thrown in a pit. Joseph was placed in, in prison, you know, but still that's what God wanted him to be at. Because that um Joseph, Jacob family gonna be the Israelite, you know, right there in Egypt. What Joseph gonna be at? You know, so that's the start the starting point of God's plan right there. You know, so sometimes God's plan is to get you, you know, to a place you need to be. It's not fair, but it's God's plan. You know, you will not know what God's trying to lead you but follow. You know, like me, you you don't understand. You don't know what God's trying to uh, lead you to, you know, but you have to still follow. You know, even if you don't understand, you still have to follow. That's just like Joseph. You know, when Joseph got there and saw seeing his brother came there and bowed down, you know, then it's triggering his mind. Uh, in his mind, okay, just I'm seeing the, the, my dream is coming to pass. So all the while, you know, he was a child. You know, he was a young boy. You know, getting all these dreams. He didn't know what the dream really meant. You know, he was telling his brother and them, they got all upset. But then he started seeing the stuff pass, uh, coming to pass. Then he realized, that, okay, this is stuff from my dream. You know, so you have to go through pain and suffering, you know, for, for you to... Uh, for you to uh, get to the next level, for you to have a fairy tale story, you know, let me say it again. Sometimes you might have to go through the pain and suffering on your journey, all this to get, you know, all this to have that fairy tale story, you know, to have that fairy tale story. Because God gonna always say, "I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna do this, do that." 
it's not going to be that easy to get to that fairy tale story. We see that Joe life wasn't easy for him to start out old and be black. We see that David life wasn't easy before he become to be king. And we see that Joe's life wasn't that easy to um uh, to to be blessed and be the head ruler over um Egypt. You know, to have that fairy tale story. Trust me, you have to go through so much pain and suffering, suffering, suffering to to have that fairy tale um life. You know, so one, we're going to trust God with every event in our lives. You know, the good and the bad, you know, is filtered, you know, to God's servant's hand. Two, do good, you know, meaning do good in the midst of your trial. You know, because you're going to be lied on, you're going to be everything else. But you can't go out there and do the type of things that's been represented on um, your character as a lie because they're going to mash that up together. So in the mix, mix of um, your trial, in the mix of the lies, in the mix of everything, you still have to do good. You still have to live your life according to God's will, even though your life is being lied on. You know, so whatever happens, despite the injustice, you know, that we suffer, you know, we are to chose the higher path that demonstrate God's spirit within us. You know, because if we walk in and walk with God, trust me, God's spirit is inside of us. And, you know, so we, we have to walk that walk, you know, that God want us to walk. You know, we have to take that higher path, you know, because we have the high spirit that's inside of us, you know. So uh, despite the um, injustice, you know, that we suffer, we ought to still chose the higher path. You know, that we is demonstrating that God's spirit is inside of us. You know, it can't help but to change if you got the high spirit that's inside you. Now, three, sometimes we may feel like running away, you know, from conflicts, you know, or trying to hide from challenges. You remember Elijah? I put that up. Elijah had, um, he do the will of God. You know, he was telling the Israelites that, you know, there was uh, worshiping other gods and all, trying to tell, tell them what they're not supposed to be doing and stuff. And then he get it, like, threatened on. Then he run. You know, he run from his challenges. Sometimes we might feel like we want to run from our challenges. You know, uh, we see knowledge. Nola did. Not Nola. Uh, Nola. Uh, Jonah. Jo- Jonah did. You know, he, he tried to run, you know, from not doing the will of what God had asked him to do. You know, um, so God will provide a place of rest and safety, you know. And so that's why he told Elijah, you know, you go back, you know, go back. And then God turned around and gave him another assignment to do, you know, because he's trying to let him know, you know, if I'm giving you an assignment, you're you working that, that, that word for me, you know, you, you're going to have peace and safety. You're going to have rest and safety, you know, but they have to still be connected with God. God will pro- provide a place of rest and safety. You know, so Psalms 4 and 8, in a place I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me to well in safety. You know, so um, we have to take delight in the Lord. Most of us, you know, we might get depressed, you know, about our um, tough situation. You know, I have, you know, you know, at, at the beginning. Like I said, I don't grow a whole lot in my in my stone. You know, turn we have to turn our thoughts to God. You know, we have to think about all the goodness that God did in our life. See when them negative thoughts come in your mind, that's the devil doing. Putting the negative thoughts in your mind, we have to we have to put the good thoughts in our mind. We have to remember all the good things that God did did for us, you know. That God do for good God do a whole lot for us, you know. When He He give us a mission, He keeping us alive to pursue His mission, you, you know. So every morning we wake up, it's a blessing to be alive, you know. So when our tough situation make us depressed, you know, sing and sing and pray songs, to him, you know, sing the praise song, you know. That that work a lot of time. Or play some um play some songs will lift our spirit, you know. I keep my um I keep the songs on Pandora. I keep the gospel on Pandora, you know, and you have to not not listen to the song with the beat and all that. Listen to the words of the song. The words of the song will lift your spirit, you know. It will lift your spirit to keep keep you going, you know. So um, I do it all the time, you know. I commit, you know. I commit my way. I commit commit your way to the Lord, you know. Uh, you have to 
You have to lift you up yourself up in some kind of way. You know, don't expect everybody to lift you up, you know, because a lot of times their heart don't be right when they're trying to do it. You know, so you have to try to motivate and lift yourself up yourself, you know, so far. This last thing may be hard for most of us to do, including myself, but I'm doing it. You know, be still. Two words, be still before the Lord. You know, we can't afford a lifetime of patience. You know, be still and patient. It's the hardest things to do in your trials. You know, because God tell me all the time, just be still. You know, and, and let God, see, God can't do no work in your life. If we, we you know, still rumbling, rumbling around with, with your mouth and all the kind of stuff. God wants you to be still for him to do the work in your life. You know, and that take patience. That take patience. You know, for we to know that God will make things right. He will make things right, but he need us to be still. You know, he is just a God who would one day rule and reign with complete fairness. You know, um, we see with David or anyone that went through a situation where it was not fair. You know, this is David, this is David had wrote his song, but how to not be bitter and find peace in our stomach. You know, it took me a long time to find some kind of peace in the mix of my chaos, chaos, but I did, you know. Of life is not fair. So you you have to realize life will not be fair. You know, and I used to be crying and drilling on it, this and that, you know, but life is not fair. You know, but we have to trust God. You know, we have to trust God and we have to lean to his promise. Because see, God make a lot of promises, a lot of his prophets. Look what he did with Abraham, you know, Jacob, you know. Oh, he, he made a lot of promises. So we have to sometimes hold on to God's promises that he made to us. You know, we have to trust that if he made a promise to us, you know, no matter what we're going through, you know, we, he's still going to make us, he's still going to make us to go through it. He's still going to prosper us. He's still going to do what he said he's going to do, you know. So he will not leave us in the mix of our stone, you know. God never left me in the mix of my stone, even though he get quiet so 